All right. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today. This is Steve with the Malone Realty Group EXP in the Atlanta area. Uh, our Path to Icon series where we talk to icon agents across the country. And today I'm, I'm thrilled to talk to Nathan Abbott because he's killing it. His team's killing it down there along the Emerald Coast, which I, I was just there this past weekend. Beautiful area. I always think to myself, you know, if I had to do all over again, maybe I would I would have dropped roots there and live there, but you get, you know, you have roots there. You've been there forever. So I'm really excited to talk to you uh, about kind of how you built your business and everything. So Nathan, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me today, Steve. And uh, yeah, Atlanta is uh, the Emerald Coast is Atlanta's second home. We have more people from Atlanta here than about anywhere else. I was going to say, yeah, we're, yeah, we're the, we're, we're almost, almost like, you know, original, you know, coastal people are like, you know, hometowners there, so to speak. Well, when it's Atlanta spring break, we surely know it down here. Amen. Amen. So talk a little bit about, uh, let's, let's start like big picture, like your team right now, uh, the Abbott Martin team or the Abbott Martin group, I should say, because yes. y'all are, y'all are rocking and rolling so far this year. Tell me about where y'all are like right now, numbers wise, and where you're going to end up at the end of the year. Uh, we should close this year. Uh, I would say just over 300 million. We set a target for 300 million, but uh, we may surpass that. Uh, right now, uh, we're I'm pending and closed. We're right about uh, 234. Good for you. So you're 234 pending and closed right now, and you're gonna end up at 300. So yeah, you could end up north of that pretty easy. For sure. So, yeah, if everything closes now, and the stuff. But, you know, we we want to set goals that we can. Uh, that are realistic, but yet pushing the envelope a little bit. And we're, we're trying to push at least a 25, 20 to 25% transactional growth uh, count uh, per year uh, overall. Cool. All right. So that's, that's where we're going in this, inter in this interview. I'd like to go all the way to, back to the beginning. Tell, sure. tell us about how you started in, in real estate. Cause I know you were third generational real estate. I mean, did you start like 18 years old, got your license and rocked and rolled, or did you do something else at first? Yeah, I started uh, right at 22 years of age. Um, I'm 45 now. Um, yeah. Was was born into a real estate family. You know, for for those that have visited the Destin area back in the day, they, they realized there wasn't much here. Uh, you know, most of the people lived in the outskirts. Uh, my grandfather found this area uh, through the military. Uh, Eglin Air Force Base is quite large here. Uh, he retired through the military, uh, moved here in the early 60s. And uh, through retirement, also started a, a management a management company at a place called El Matador. And it was the only building in three counties with an elevator at the time. So this area was relatively wow. unknown. Uh, my right. father, and my uncle moved down here and they uh, really believed in this area when a lot of people didn't. Right. And I just had a vision that one day it'd be a, a world class vacation destination. And uh, I watched that from a young age, from the inception of people just starting to visit this area to uh, what it's became today. Um, I started real estate in 2001, um, really just started off as a single agent. Um, I, I always kind of had a dream to hopefully one day relaunch out of realty services and uh, just watching my grandpa, my uncle, I like dealing with people. I obviously love our area, uh, moved away for a couple of years and then uh, to be a ski bum and came back in 2001 to start my career in real estate. Very good. Very good. So, all right. So you talk about your solo and then you started your team. Yes. Well, my, I didn't start a team until later on down the road. I was an individual agent uh, for um, for quite a while, about four years. And then my wife uh, today, uh, we met and we started a, a little team, just the two of us. And we had uh, one agent that was helping us at the time. And um, we started building out a team about 2010. Okay. Very good. So, all right. The one question I wanted to ask you was, I mean, was there ever a moment where you want to kind of rebel against the whole real estate thing? I mean, third generation, everybody else has done it. It's like, I don't want to be real estate. I want to go do, you know, whatever else, be a lawyer, be a doctor. You know, was there, was there that moment or, I mean, were you always gung ho? There, I guess there was some resistance at times, um, but I've always loved the sales process, mostly because it allowed me to interact with people for, for a purpose. You know, it started off kind of helping. I loved helping my grandpa at his garage sales and, uh, just like the process. And even when I was, you know, younger, you know, busting tables and waiting tables, I, I really enjoyed the interaction with the customer and sharing with them some suggestions uh, of other places to go out to eat or to enjoy <clears throat> in a place that truly is my native home. But I did get thrown into that mix a lot when our family was running a lot of real estate. It was almost, you know, people 
talk to me as in the name of the, my family's company. You know, when people would introduce me, like, you know, Nathan with Abbott Realty Services, they were really the only real estate company in the area at the time. So I was very focused on creating my own identity, um, not just being thrown in the mix of my family's company. So, you know, there was a true mission to, um, you know, to, to really keep our, keep it real and to build an identity uh, outside of the business where later on in life, I learned to appreciate uh, the things that they built because uh, they did it right. Cool. Very good. Very good. So, all right. So you're, you're rolling, you start building your team out. Now, was that because you just had too much going on and you had to, you know, kind of grow because of that, or did you make a, a an effort of saying, no, we've got to build a team and let's kind of grow it. I mean, what, what was the catalyst to kind of kick that team off? Well, I, I think real estate, you know, my, we had our uh, second child and uh, my, my wife decided to be there for them, which has been, they're our greatest investment. She's been, she, she had a master's in education and has really helped uh, them grow. It's been awesome to watch, but I also realized that real estate can be a very uh, lonely position alone. Uh, you know, everyone talks, talks about team structure and togetherness, but in so many times, and, and models, uh, everyone's for themselves and everyone's working alone. And I didn't really want that in my life. I, you know, you can't take the money with you. And I think it kind of just started for me being able to, you know, share this path of what we're trying to grow with other people that I cared about and people that I wanted to surround myself around. Uh, Cause you can't do it all uh, without some help, without some leverage and people, you know, right. stepping in individualized roles because as realtors, typically we're pu pulled in so many different directions it's hard to focus on anything because you're just having to be reactive to everything that comes at you. And that's when I knew if we created the right team with the right culture, um, we could celebrate success together, but also pick each other up and, and help each other where we were lacking in certain areas. And that's really how the mindset of a team started. It really just started having, um, you know, a person that was helping us in marketing originally mm -hmm. and that led to a, a buyer's agent from there. And we've continued to, 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 to grow that. And our, our, our team today looks very different than how it was when it started. Okay. So, so with your team, obviously you guys, are, I mean, you got a bunch of people now. You got 40 agents now, five client care slash admin help behind the scenes. It took, it took you a while to get there. Were there any major hurdles that you remember hitting along the way, kind of where you, you hit your head and you thought, I'm not going to do that one again? I oh, mean, for sure. You think of, I mean, I think you, I think you, you, you have to fail forward. You know, you have to be willing to jump into certain layers and and not be too proud to realize that you can make some mistakes along the way. And so, you know, when I when I first started growing a team, I was just very happy that people wanted to join the team. You know, there was no vetting process, there was no uh, culture being built necessarily. There was um, there was just like, hey, you want to come on, come on board and slowly it started developing a culture where everyone was working for themselves again, like a, like a lot of standard brokerage models are and not necessarily that's a bad thing, but it wasn't the, the dream I was really working towards. And it wasn't your thing. Um, and so we dissolved that team. You know, some people left, well, we let the others go and just realized that I kind of wanted to start from scratch and uh, we did it again. And the second round got better than the first round, but realized it still wasn't, that oiled machine that we were hoping it to become. And then I finally started just really thinking about the culture of our business and, 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 and what were the things that made me feel good. And, and it really was surrounding yourself with people that you just had an instant connection. So I started hiring people strictly based off of where that connection was. And I feel that that was a person I'd be happy to bring around my own immediate family. And, you know, did I like being around that person and, and, and we started building a culture Based off of that, we obviously had, you know, things that we needed aligned with our culture that we started sharing with the people that are coming on board. And um, I think some of the bigger steps, you know, recently is just really understanding uh, that there are people out there that can do things better than you and, and, and finding the right people that support places that you may be weaker at versus trying to do it uh, alone. And that's really been a very uh, strategic uh, transition in our business of having the right people on board and having them in the right spots uh, right. to help your business grow. Everyone has very different personality types and plugging people into the right pieces that align with them for the company is, is very important. Okay. So, so you can hit the reset button. 
Yes. It, it basically, because <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of realtors, they don't realize that. They're like, they, they make the mistakes. They kind of fall on their face. And they're like, now what do I do? I like, right. well, pick up and don't do that again. You, know? yeah, you, you learn the most through failure. You know, exactly. I mean, you, you, you learn to become, I feel much better in leadership by not being too proud, as mentioned, to realize where you could have done better. You know, I mean, um, when people come to you asking questions, a lot of times it's very easy to react to defend your position versus being honored for that conversation and realizing that question is coming for a reason. And what a great time to truly dig deeper on that and to let everyone's voice be heard and to build solutions versus uh, defense. And I think, uh, you know, that's really what culture is about, that you're willing to keep it real, talk about the real stuff, you know, welcome the difficult conversations because those conversations is what's going to lead to uh, results if you can do it in a mature way and, and continue to build, um, you know, off the things that didn't work right. Um, switch it around to do it different the next time. Right. All right. So as you mentioned earlier, you know, you kind of hinted at earlier, I mean, you're at 40 three agents right now. Yes. This time last year, you were like at like 10 or so. Yeah, we started, um, I went independent with my brokerage in 2020, about a month before COVID popped off. It was okay. uh, scary times. I was with the company previous. Uh, it was a really great home for me for 18 years and um, took the leap of faith. I knew I wanted to, uh, it seems like that's the next step for all uh, agents that they kind of build this path of, you know, you got to be a strong independent agent. From there, you need to build a team. From there, you need to make the ultimate leap and launch your own company, launch your own brokerage. And uh, I did that in 2020. Uh, COVID popped off. It was a very, you know, unnerving time. But we we honestly knew that we've been through, you know, transition before through the oil spill and the housing crisis and the different things that have happened here. That I realized that although that we've never experienced anything such as this, it was a time to really focus on how to pivot forward during. Uh, difficult times and uh, we had a great year that year we uh, we broke 100 million during some really challenging times uh, i've been working toward to break um, that that metric my whole career and we had 10 of us uh, that did that and um, as as we started making some transition i i realized that being the broker uh, was not what i dreamed uh, it was a lot of state responsibilities he became more of an administrator um, and it really was taking away some of my passions. And, um, you know, that's when uh, the, the EXP model came into play. I, something I rejected for a long time. And right. uh, we, we did officially come on to EXP uh, in November of 2020. And uh, there's more layers of our company that I wasn't having to be the brainchild alone for. And right. we were able to leverage that. And um, honestly, with the, the movement into EXP, it took away the fear of growth. I had some really unique support and and re new relationships and previous relationships and made the leap. And within that year, we went from uh, 10 agents to about 35. Uh, we've added another 10 uh, since then. We've had great retention. Um, but I honestly think it, it came down to removing the broker ownership role, remove fear, and allowed me to align with the right people in my corner on so many different directions to help me understand what true growth looked like. So, cause I mean, so you weren't a, a, your own broker. I, I was like a year. Yeah. Like, ten, like 10 months. 10 months. And as you can imagine, like jumping into that realm, there was a lot of pressure. I honestly didn't feel that I was worthy to relaunch Avert Realty Services because they were the, you know, they were the biggest, largest company in our area, had about 1200 employees that my father, and my uncle had a bunch of management property and, there's a lot of pressure in that, you know, it's like you go relaunch the family brand. And, um, and then I realized when I did that, that it wasn't the dream I was searching for. It actually took me away from some of the dreams that I had um, based off of just how overloaded you became and administration work, you know, right. the, the, the pressures of, of so many layers. Um, and so um, I was really concerned about what my customers would think. And, uh, but I realized really quickly when I started announcing to all of them that, Hey, I'm the broker owner of Albert Realty Services. It was more of an ego thing. Like I did it. I'm here. Uh, my customers had no clue who the difference was. In fact, they, it, it almost made it an awkward conversation because they would say, well, weren't you Abbott Realty Services all along? Like, I thought that's what y'all were. And I was like, no, I was the 
Nathan Abbott team over here. And um, and then they question, you know, well, did you own your own company? Well, we, absolutely I did, but I was a, a broker associate at this bigger brokerage. And I realized really quickly that the customers were there because of the relationships and, and you showing up to win for them. Uh, they didn't give a dang about where your license was hung. Right. And that's and, and that was some of my fear. And, and I knew that I had to jump into being a brokerage because I didn't want to look back and say I didn't give it my best shot. But I also think during that time of COVID, our entire world has changed. Right. Technology has changed. Meeting space has changed. Right. Um, I just realized you really have to leverage yourself with a much bigger piece and surround yourself around people that have done it bigger than you have. I always want to be one of the dumbest ones in the room. And EXP very quickly allowed me to put me in some scenarios where it's like, man, look at what this person's doing and that person and that person's inspiring. And through that, we've been able to inspire other people as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So when I assume you talk to other independent like broker owners yes. that you know, had their smaller, bro do you see in them a lot of those same fears that you have? I mean, obviously, you know, if I call and talk to somebody, I don't, I've never been an independent broker owner, but you've walked that fear. You've been in there. I mean, you, does that allow you to kind of break bread with them a little bit more? I, I can, because I think everyone thinks that's the ultimate goal. Right. You know, uh, all I ever knew was being a team. I, I didn't know what it was like to be the broker owner. Right. And a lot of people are chasing broker owner because they think, hey, I'm going to be, I'll, I'll be able to make the rules. I'll, I'll be at a hundred percent. Um, man, like you just immediately, I just felt the change. It was like, okay, you're the broker now. Now you have to make sure everyone's paying their MLS dues on time. And you got to make sure that you're the final piece to be able to review the, all the contracts and make sure that every piece is added for, you know, the right, you know, contractual purposes. And it was stressing out our accountant because she was cutting the checks now. And it was just so many other layers that well, I was finding myself being plugged behind a computer screen all day versus interacting with my agents and helping build opportunity. And that's what I ultimately loved. That's um, what we do as realtors. Right. And, and so, um, yeah, that story I think really hits home for people because they think that that is the only way that you can build freedom. And a lot of times when you become the broker owner, you remove a lot of freedom from your life. And, wow. um, and yeah, so that I can speak from experience of what that felt like and what it's felt like since we decided to make a shift into this global, you know, tech company that, I'm no longer the broker, but I'm still able to run my business as if I you know, was one. All right. So while we're in the XP world, so let's talk about, so your icon, so you've yes. hit that icon status. So for people who don't know what that means, give us the quick 30 second. I'll let you do it since you've hit it sure. um, and because that handles, you know, the, what you pay the XP to have them be the broker, you know? Absolutely. And uh, you have a lot of extra support uh, in that. And so, I looked at it really i didn't know about these other layers you know a lot of people are chasing the passive revenue or the different stock options and stuff for me the main reason was it was going to simplify the process for me and for me paying them sixteen thousand a year to cap to have those pressures taken off of my shoulders allowed me to spend all that extra time and loving on our agents our customers our our vision and, uh, and that's where the growth really started happening. I mean, I, I was so happy to become the broker and I was even happier when I was no longer the broker. Right. And when I, and when they told me, you know, officially that, Hey, you're no longer the broker, you're a broker associate again, and you can scale as fast as you want to. And we're going to help support that process for you. I realized really quickly that, you know, what removing fear look like is now I'm in a position to say, okay, well, I can grow. I don't have to do all the state regulated uh, administrative stuff to bring someone on board. I can send them a link, bring them on board and just be supportive to them. And, um, and they're going to benefit, you know, my agents too, if they attract talent to our company that they also can be compensated for helping those agents grow. And um, we went uh, from there and, and, and about a, I'd say a 12 month period, we went from uh, 10 agents to 35 agents in the course of that year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone started moving to Florida. So the market obviously uh, was just on fire here and it still is today. Um, but we also, you know, I've worked 18, you know, 20 years, 18 years at um, tw actually 20 years to break 100 million in production with 10 agents within one year of joining EXP. We went from 10 agents to 35 agents and we closed 231 last year. 
just crazy. And so just amazing growth. And I've actually been less stressed growing on that level with the model that I'm in now than what it took the 20 years previous to, to get there. Now, so you have 43 agents, but as far as admin slash client care support, you have five, right? That's right. That's a big, that's a big ratio. You know, a lot of times you hear a lot more the client care team versus the agents. So that's a lot of agents, but you're saying you don't have a whole lot of stress. So, I mean, you must have some rock stars that you've hired in those spots. To we do. I, I mean, I, I was never willing, I think before to invest in, in real talent. You know, right. I think that you have to be willing to find people that can do it better than you to, replace you in a way and not being afraid of that threat and, and, and willing to pay the you know type of salary it would take to get a top level person. Um, and, you know, we, we kind of winged it. I mean, when we went from a hundred million to two thirty one, I mean, let's face it, it was crazy times. Everyone was moving to Florida. We're just all running around trying to keep it all together. And why well, do through EXP, it, you know, it started us. We, we merged with an amazing transaction company that was handling our, contract to close processing. That was a huge piece. Right. Uh, and then from there, they're the ones that are communication, communicating with EXP, who's that extra layer of support and review. So it let me sleep at night better to say, hey, you know, like we have a triple layer of contract review by the time that that agent gets paid, everything that's going to be there is there or they're not getting paid. And I don't have to control that process. Right. And so even though we have five in-house people, we have some really great partnerships that are virtual right. uh, that have helped our business in other realms, like such as a TC company, graphic designer, you know, marketing team and different layers. So we have, you know, five people on payroll, but we do have another, you know, four companies that we interact with. We have a good coach in place as well um, that helps us you know, scale in that place without having to have them all in house. And that's, those are all the leverage pieces that, you know, like for me coming into XP, I mean, the, the groups that I'm in and we've talked about, uh, I'm under Kyle Whistle. Oh yeah. yeah Kyle's a of mine. I mean, we talk, their mastermind that they do. And it's just like, I mean, you're just like three pages of notes every Monday when we do that. Yeah. So, I mean, the smartest people, like you said, I, if I'm the dumbest person in the room, I'm in the right room. Yeah. And so, so that's the thing I love about EXP is that you've got these people that they're on the ground, they figure all this stuff out and all the, you know, support pieces and things like that. So where, I mean, before I got here, you tell me you went from 100 to 231 million. I mean, I can't imagine what that would have looked like, but here we have the people in place that do that. That's what I love about EXP. Well, you get a lot of people. I mean, it was the first culture I found from a mass scale that had a similar culture to what we were trying to build with our team. And that was agents helping each other. Right. And our culture internally is really built on that as well. EXP has done it on a global realm. And, you know, you, you notice when you go to those events is that there's no ego, you know, everyone helps each other. And a lot of this was being inspired from a lot of people that I've met in my life prior to joining EXP. You know, there was a lot of mastermind events and stuff that I went to and, and that's really what started making me think about this a little bit more. I was like, man, that person just went on to EXP. I, I've known that person from back in the day and gosh, their production grew and they seem like they're having more people intertwined in their life right now to, wow, that, that single agent came on board and now they have a team to, you know, I mean, you just see that story over and over again. And um, when agents are helping agents with an abundance mindset versus a scarcity mindset, you know, that's really where all the magic starts happening. And you ask me, like, how do we grow in that way? Uh, our agents are truly there for each other. I mean, we have a group chat. If the agent knows the answer, we're paying it forward. We have we have found leadership from within. We have a, a broker associate on our team that's now helping our newer agents develop uh, to a different realm. And so we're building, we're really working hard to build leadership from other agents already on our team. At the end of the day, I think, people want to lead and they can't take the money with them. And if you're not creating an impact in someone else as part of your journey, what are you really building? And, and we've all starting to take that initiative internally that, Hey, if a person comes onto our team, we know that they've been very deep detailed vetted on, on their 
on our culture and are they a match? And once they come on board, our rest of our team truly accepts them because they know they're protective of this culture and they know that we've also gone through the steps to, to dig deep to make sure that that person's a good fit for our team. So when hiring agents, you, you talked about the culture. So what are you, in a nutshell, I mean, what are you looking for? I assume you have like the standards, like kind of the, you know. Uh, we're really looking for, is that person comfortable and just keeping it real with who they are? You know, you can tell very quickly when you interview someone, if conversation is just very awkward, you know, is it hard to talk? And I've had to tell a few people before to just say, hey, man, uh, you know, why don't we start over a little bit? Seems a little, you know, formal. Take the pressure off, right? We, I really just want to get to know you. Don't you just re really get, you know, feel comfortable in the space. And I've seen people at times say, you know, you, you, they get comfortable because you don't make this like pressure environment. And next thing you know, you really start to get to know who they were. And there's been people that we were not looking to bring on that during that conversation piece, they started opening up and we really got to see them for who they are. And then that next interview was a much more comfortable spot because if it's awkward from the get go and you can't break through just natural conversation without it being forced, right? You're, there's probably not going to be a great cultural fit for our team. Well, because then how are you servicing your clients? You that's know? right. Because that, that's part of it too. So when hiring agents, do you prefer to hire seasoned agents or do you prefer to hire brand new agents that just got their license and are looking to jump into a team? We like both. I don't want uh, necessarily brand new. Uh, we, we, which unless it's just sometimes we, we have some evaluations that we do that you just see a rock star in the making. And right. we've had some agents that have absolutely exploded in their first and first and second year because we just saw the drive that they had from the get go. We saw their intelligence. We saw um, that they were going to show up. And so we, for the right new agents, we, we welcome them. Uh, we like agents that have a little bit of experience that, you know, want to break through those barriers and we know that we can help them get there if it's the right person to do so. Right. Um, I really love the process taking someone from a point and getting them to a level of top production because I honestly feel that times that creates more impact than bringing someone on that already knows how to do it. You know, everyone has different models, but that's that, you know, that impact, you know, movement that we're trying to create. And I've had people tell us, you know, like, this has changed my life. And that really, um, you know, hits home when you can do that internally with your company. Right. Um, so if somebody comes in brand new, all right, brand new agent, trying to decide if they want to go solo or if they want to go team. Right. I, mean, I always tell people they got to go team. I assume that's what you're going to tell people too. But give me a 30 second reason. If you're brand new, why join a team versus trying to figure it out yourself? I think EXP is designed for two, two types of groups of people. I think it's really amazingly designed for a, a huge producer, maybe someone that's thinking about becoming a broker or has a team already, or someone that's just a top producer. I think it aligns perfectly with them because the model just financially works great. Uh, there's some great things in place, uh, or you're looking to join a team to, to build and grow from. Um, you know, what I like about our team is that it's no longer, let me, bring you on our team with hopes that we keep you here forever. And if you leave, we never get to work together again. Or, or we may, I mean, we may do some deals together and we have good relationships with people that are no longer on our team from earlier in the, in my real estate times. But um, when you can talk to someone and share with them, like, Hey, this model allows that I would love just to help you grow to the top tier of our production. Mm -hmm. We hope that you want to stay forever because you love the culture and you love what we're building. But at the same time, if you decide that you want to go independent and build your own team, EXP creates a model that you can still be partnered with them in that realm and then help them grow in that piece. And that is really the ultimate goal. I mean, if you can see if you can help someone build on that level, it is truly life changing for them. And to be even a fraction of that part for them, right. that is how legacy is built. It's not built by building the most money by being a jerk to people. Right. Um, I, I want my kids to be proud of something that I built that people can look back and say, man, they actually gave a damn and promoted growth, promoted us to get better versus us just being stagnant and staying in one spot. Right. I love it. Love that. Very good. So you're 
231 million or you're gonna do 300 million potentially this year or maybe break that what are, what's your breakdown of where you're getting your deals from how much is that as like sphere past clients how much of that is internet leads referrals things like that so we we uh we built a um a development and consulting sales team and so we've been bringing a lot of new inventory to the market that's a huge uh, uh strong suit within our company we have some really amazing variety of, of new inventory that we're bringing that we've uh, have great connections with several builders uh developers in our area uh, we have a a lot of it that's fear and, and past business um, and, and a third of it is new opportunities and those new opportunities are online leads or someone that you meet out and about and um, you know our area is um, uh, a melting pot for entrepreneurial activities and and, and everyone you meet down here are here because they want to be here they're here on vacation you get to see a lot of different people and you just got to be aware of what's surrounding you i mean if, if if you're seeing someone out and about it can be as simple as man what a beautiful day today gosh how, how nice i use restaurants and local connection to help people hey you should really try out this place it's one of my favorite local spots down here and next mm -hmm. thing you know it comes into conversation it could be an amazing opportunity um and that's the one thing i love about real estate is like i naturally want to meet people and enjoy that process but when you also have another component that's not being pushed down their throats but in a way to know that like, hey, I can truly help you get situated and and have true local connections. So I think it's a blend of three. I think you always got to be building new business, but you got to support the past business and stay in touch with them. And then, um, you know, the sphere of influence that we're encouraging all of our agents to build just from communication and reaching out to people that they know away from our team. Right. So where do you see the, the business going in the next like five years? I mean, are, as you look forward, I mean, are you telling your agents, this is what we need to be pivoting more towards? Is it more like if the stuff's working, pour more gasoline on what's working right now? I mean, what are, what are your your thoughts on what's going to happen over the next like three to five years real estate wise? I think real estate wise, uh, if you are not willing to always be adapting when necessary, you can lose really quickly. So you got to be aware of what the market's like at that very given time, because it can always change. And I've been through three cycles in my career. I think where our market is right now is that you, especially a lot of the, you know, well, the Southeast has had a lot of attention. I think we're finally being discovered in a way that we've never been before. Right. The great place of the country. And we're having a lot of these bigger cities uh, that are moving to this area and they're falling in love with it. Uh, the same reasons of why we're here. Um, you know, I think every market condition is different based off of where you are. You do have some natural, you know, national, um, stats, mm -hmm. like the weather report, you know, it can be different from community to community to location to location. It can always be changing. Um, I, I feel that the people that have been buying all these properties, um, have been real buyers. You know, we've had a lot of speculation in the past. Uh, I don't necessarily seeing us having any big downfall in pricing. I think that things will stabilize some. I think the panic shopping will slow down some as they need to be. Because, I mean, it's frustrating when a buyer comes in, they have great intentions and there's no inventory. So we're starting to see some more inventory come on the market, which I think is a healthy thing. I think we're seeing some more normalization of our uh, our marketplace, which I also think is healthy. Right. Um, uh, we, we may have a little bit of a blip because of these interest rates and stuff going on. But I think overall, even though it feels, you know, financially, our country's going in a little bit of recession, people still want homes and they especially want properties and places that they enjoy being at. Very cool. I think you've answered all my questions. I just got one question. This one is selfish and it's for me. Okay. Next time I'm down there, all right, we used to go to Pompano Joe's all the time. Okay. That place is like busy as crazy. And it, is, it used to be a little more divey than it is right now, as far as sure. you get a little cheap sandwich. I just want something, I mean, good, cheap, really knock your socks off seafood in that Destin to Fort Walton area. Well, usually uh, the, 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 all the best spots are the ones that aren't the tourist spots, you know, the locally owned and, right. uh, but, but we can definitely help you with that. I mean, that's, that, that is, you know, I think really what makes us stand apart. We have native expertise in our marketplace. We have a lot of great connection and our, our goal ultimately is whether it's a vacation purchaser or someone on just here to visit or someone moving here as residentially is that we want to plug them in and, and to be able to live like a local truly would. And you got to have someone with some long-term experience here in order to be able to plug them in the right spots and, and build around that. So I, I'd love to, it's one of my ultimate things to do. It's like, uh, call me next time you're in town. I'd love to 
cool. point you in some of my favorite spots so you can have an amazing vacation. We went to, we went to Stubies last time we were there, and their gumbo was off the chain good. Oh, yeah. Off the chain good. So yeah, we found that. The, the dining down here is really amazing. Yeah, it really is. I, I love it. Like I said, totally jealous. One day I may just pack this whole thing up and come work for you down there on the Emerald Coast. Because I mean, I just every time we're down there, it's home, and it's it's great. Yeah, yeah it's interesting when people come here for the first time. Uh, they walk, you know, you can just see it in their face. Like, how did I never see beaches like this before? I mean, I honestly think we have the the most beautiful beaches in the world, and Amen. I, I feel very honored to be able to be sharing my native home with other people on the way that I've always known it, and. And to see it build, I mean, it truly is becoming a world-class destination is the way my, my father, my uncle visualized back in the day before it's time. And to see it maneuvering in that in that place, um, I mean, I, I think that we are definitely on the map now and, and for good reason. And uh, there's there's nothing quite like the Emerald Coast. Very cool. All right. So if people are seeing this. They've got referrals for you down there along the Emerald Coast. How do they get a hold of Nathan Abbott and the Abbott's? Martin. Yeah, they can just go to Abbott Martin Group. It's A B B O T T Martin Group dot com. Uh, they can always reach out to me directly. Um, I'm always one that does answer his phone, and uh, my direct number is eight five zero eight zero three sold, which is seven six five three. Try right. to pick that one number out, but uh, yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions anyone may ever have and plug them into the right people within our team to be serving serve them in high regard. Awesome, Nathan. That was awesome. That was a fantastic, fantastic amount of information. That was a lot of help, and I really appreciate it. Appreciate if you need you. Somebody, something from somebody down the Emerald Coast, call, seriously, call Nathan. I'm working with him. I've sent people to him. His people are awesome. He's awesome. I appreciate everybody's time. Y'all have a good evening. Appreciate Thanks, you. Thank you.